Hey, Elise Pickett here with the Urban Harvest, and today I have a tropical survival garden trifecta. Three food crops that you can plant in any soil without water or any extra inputs. I'm not saying we're gonna be going through a zombie apocalypse, but I am a huge proponent for growing your own food. And there are some crops, like annual vegetable gardens, that take a lot more effort and input on our part. You're going to constantly have to reseed them. You're going to have to make sure there's uh, enough water, good soil, no pest issues. You're gonna to have to harvest it and process it ahead of time. So there is a lot of extra work that goes into an annual vegetable garden. There are also food crops that are really easy, basically maintenance free, and you can grow them from cuttings. You don't even have to do seed. So let's go over these three food crops so that you can get them growing too. Moringa, also known as the drumstick tree, is sometimes called the tree of life. And in my opinion, it is a well-earned title. The Moringa tree is incredibly nutrient dense. It has meaningful amounts of protein. It has important amino acids. It's got seven times the vitamin C of an orange. It has, I think it's 15 times the potassium of a banana. There are a ton of nutrients in this plant. You can eat the leaves. You can eat the seed pods. You can use the seeds for processing things. You can also eat the roots. And if you're in a pinch, you could potentially even use the wood for firewood. This tree has so many different uses and is so, so nutrient dense. And to boot, it is super easy to grow. Uh, you can plant it in the cruddiest, sandiest soil you have. It will take shade, it can take sun, it needs no watering once established, and it is virtually pest free. And pollinators love it. So the leaves can be used fresh or dried. They are typically stored dried, uh, just like you would see in a lot of the medicinal teas you might purchase at the grocery store. A lot of them will include Moringa. Um, but the leaves can also be used fresh if you have a tree growing outside. I'll use it in smoothies. You can toss it into salads. It has a slight nutty flavor. Uh, and you can also use it um, in soups or stews. You can pretty much toss it in anything. Super, super helpful. You can also use the seed pods. The thin ones about pencil width can be used kind of sort of as a bean. You can use it um, chopped up and cooked or you can use it in um, a traditional Indian cuisine. You can cook it in different curries and soups and stews. Um, but once it gets beyond this size, you can also use this size seed pod. You can boil it and cut it open and scoop out the inside. It kind of has a little bit of like an asparagus-y flavor. Um, not my favorite use, I do use it like this. Um, but once they go beyond this stage and turn brown, you can use the dried seeds uh, as an oil. Uh, so if you do have an oil press, you can use them for cooking oil. And then you can also use the seeds to purify water. When they're crushed up and added to water, it removes solids and even some bacteria so that you can easily boil and purify the water. You can also use the roots as horseradish substitutes. So if you're looking for that zip, it's yet one more use that you can do with this tree. Um, you can use it as an ornamental standalone tree. They grow very quickly. That is a caveat to this. If you're not familiar with Moringa, it is incredibly productive and fast growing. Uh, so there's a slight bit of maintenance if you want to keep this tree small and compact for easier harvesting. Um, but people will use it as a fence, a living fence or a hedge. Um, you can also use it as that specimen tree like I mentioned. So a lot of different ways that you can use this tree and grow it. It can be grown from cuttings, but I do suggest using seed for this. They seem to be a little bit more productive and robust in my experience and opinion, um, but it can be grown from cuttings or seeds. This is chaya, also known as tree spinach. And it is another of my 
uh, tropical survival garden trifecta plants because it is incredibly easy to grow. You can grow it from cuttings. It takes no extra water um, or any sort of attention on your part. It has no pest issues uh, and it is incredibly productive per square foot. I mean, you get a ton of output in a very, very small amount of space. Um, I would think one to two plants could easily um, sustain a household with their leafy green production um, if you're eating it on a couple of days a week basis. Very, very productive plants. The leaves are what you eat on chaya. They are very nutritious. They have meaningful amounts of protein. They are high in vitamin A, um, calcium, and iron. And the caveat with this plant is that it contains cyanide. Yes, cyanide. Um, but they are also perfectly safe to eat. So um, when you're harvesting them, you pull off the leaves, you take them inside, you boil them for five minutes, and that completely removes the cyanide from the leaves. They are perfectly safe to eat after that. Um, some people ask or worry about um, the gassing off of the liquid. There is no issues with that. Um, so it is perfectly safe to cook in the house. You're not need to worry about that. And they are perfectly safe to eat after you have cooked them for five minutes. Um, there are places around the world that will eat this raw, um, but it is not recommended in um, the American diet because our digestion is not as robust and developed as people who have been eating this as a culture over long periods of time. So do cook it, but as long as you cook it, you have an incredibly, incredibly productive, hearty, and healthy plant that you can grow here in Florida or any tropical garden. The last on our list for the tropical survival garden trifecta is cassava, also known as yucca with one C, not two. Very different from the uh, Mexican aloe looking yucca that produces tequila. This is not the same thing. <laughs> uh, yucca or cassava is grown for the edible roots. It is very similar, it's in the same family as chaya, so it is very similar in that it does contain cyanide. But like you learned before, there are multiple ways to process it so that you do not have to worry about it. It is a very um, good food source for calories. Uh, so it provides the starchy roots as a food source. They're okay in vitamins, um, but what you're looking for here is calories and yucca fits the bill. After planting a cutting of the stem, you will be able to harvest a substantial amount of root crop within eight to 12 months, depending on when you plant it. Um, if you plant it over the winter, you usually are gonna have to wait about a year because it likes that warmth of our summers to really get the root production growing. To process the yucca, uh, you dig up the entire plant. You make lots and lots of cuttings from the growth up top. Technically, the leaves can be cooked. Um, they are higher in cyanide content than the chaya is, so it's generally not recommended, but I suppose if you were in a true survival garden state, um, it could be used. Um, but typically what I do is just strip the leaves, take my cuttings, create more plants, and dig up the roots. Boil them, and then my favorite way to eat them is as a french fry substitute. So I will slice them up into french fry pieces, put some coconut oil and some salt on them and bake them in the oven. They are absolutely delicious, but there are a lot of different cultures that use this regularly in their diet as a staple crop. This is literally a staple crop for millions and millions of people all across Africa. So when people wonder, is it safe to eat? Yes, it is safe to eat. Millions of people do it all over the world. So here it is, the tropical survival garden trifecta. Moringa, chaya, yeah. and cassava. These three plants can provide you with a ton of nutrition and no effort on your part. I cannot recommend growing these enough. Even if you never have to use them, at least you have them. 
If you want to learn more about different plants to grow in your urban homestead um, or a tropical garden, I do have a ton of videos on annual vegetable gardening as well as more permaculture type plants for you to grow in any condition. Have a great day.